The topic of this video is graphing functions from the library of functions. Let's look at a problem. Graph the cube root function, f of x equals the cube root of x. Hint, choose perfect cubes for x. All right, so you might notice that I've placed the steps over here on the side. Um, these are not the full steps as shown in the learning workbook. These are sort of an abbreviated version of those steps, just to remind us of the sequence. Uh, be sure that you are always paying attention to the detailed steps because sometimes they include very important words that are not shown here in this shortcut version. All right, so it says choose x, find y, and our hint says that we should choose perfect cubes for x. So let's do that. And let's make a table here for x's and y's, and let's choose all perfect cubes. So negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. Those are all perfect cubes. All right, great. So now we just have to have to plug in to find y. So for example, if x equals negative 8, then f of x, which is y, is equal to the cube root of negative 8. Well, a cube root is asking yourself, what number do you have to multiply by itself three times to make negative 8? And the answer is negative 2. Negative 2 cubed equals negative 8. Therefore, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So we can put that value in our table. All right, let's try the next one. If x equals negative 1, then y equals the cube root of negative 1, which equals negative 1. If x equals 0, then y equals the cube root of 0, which is 0. If x equals 1, then y equals the cube root of 1, which is 1. And finally, if x equals 8, then y equals the cube root of 8, which is 2. Okay, so we've got five points. Next, we're going to plot those points. In order to plot these points, we have to establish a graph scale so that all of the points will fit. The biggest and smallest x values are negative 8 and 8. The biggest and smallest y values are negative 2 and 2. So as long as our entire graph goes from negative 10 to 10 in both variables, all of our points should be able to fit. So let's create a blank graph grid that goes from negative 10 to 10 in all directions. It's important that all of your tick marks are equally spaced on your graph. If they're not equally spaced, then your graph will be distorted. In fact, I need to move that up just a little bit. All right, now that we have our blank graph grid, we're ready to put our points on top of it. So let's start with negative 8, negative 2. That's the point you get when you start at the origin and go 8 steps to the left and 2 steps down. Next, negative 1, negative 1 would be here. 0, 0, the origin. 1, 1. 8, 2. All right, now we connect the dots together. And the reason for the arrows is because these x values continue forever. For example, the next perfect cube after 8 is 27, so we would get the point 27, 3, which is way, way over there. This list goes forever up and forever down. Correspondingly, the graph goes forever right and forever left. All right, this is the graph of our cube root function.